Good morning. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, so getting the little video started. So we're going to make some things with barley and um, barley and mushrooms and things like that. So we're going to do a little barley dish, actually a couple of barley dishes, and then I get to my tools here. I have so many plans. So welcome everyone. I'm going to start with cutting the onion and uh, getting that going. And yeah, um, I don't think I'm going to use this whole onion in this recipe. So I think I will cut it in a different um, in a different way than I usually do. Hey Jean, good morning. Hi. So happy to see everybody here. Happy Thursday. Oh my gosh, it's Thursday already. Kind of crazy, really. Um, the time is just going so fast. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to, let me think about this. I think I want a little bit bigger chunks of onions in this particular dish. So I'm just gonna go across here and not make it as fine. My onion stuck into my knife. And, um, <laughs> oh, it's so nice to see you. And uh, lovely to have people on here, especially because, you know, as the, uh, as the fall goes along, it'll be a little bit, um, you know, less seeing people, right? Because they won't be outside so much. Hey, Kate, hi, good morning. Um, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be, I think, really important for people to um, connect through the internet or whatever, whatever means, um, you know, as the fall comes, because I think, you know, listening to a few people yesterday and, um, you know, just a few people locally and, and on the internet, um, it's going to be really important to support uh, people that are, especially people that are living alone. Um, so yeah, so I think that is, uh, you know, keep in mind, that's something to keep in mind to reach out and, and offer, you know, a connection with people during, you know, as the, uh, thankfully we've still got good weather, but as the weather gets colder and people stay inside more, they're, you know, they might tend to isolate more. So it's really important. I just want to get that out there and pass that around that it's super important to support people who are living alone. Hi, Manik, how are you doing? Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. So, um, Hmm. Okay. We're going to do mushrooms. I'm going to get this going. And so we're going to do, these are just regular little, um, uh, button mushrooms. <laughs> so it's, there's not too much special, although, you know, I have to say they do have, um, they do have selenium in them, which is good. They do have some healing properties for sure. And for those of you that haven't, um, you know, that haven't heard me say this before, um, all of the um, culinary mushrooms, like all the, the ones that you use for cooking, uh, they have something, <clears throat> well, any edible mushrooms really have something called chitin, chitin, C-H-I-T-I-N, and chitin is an indigestible, um, you know, it's an it's it's the part of the the mushroom that the all the uh, oh my gosh where are my words all the nutrition that's in the mushrooms is not really accessible unless the mushroom is cooked because of this chitin binds and holds on to the nutrients and so um so they say it's super important to always cook your mushrooms okay so that's that was the point i was trying to get across um these guys are um there are mini portobellos, which are really good too. So the portobellos um, have, they have more nutritional content than the little button mushrooms. So they have, um, uh, oh, they're really good for the, um, an, as an antioxidant, they're good for inflammation. Um, you know, they're more, they're going more towards the medicinal mushrooms, the portobellos, even though, um, you know, they're, they're really good for, 
Oh my gosh, okay, so selenium, they're antioxidant, they have potassium, they have uh, copper, and um, so all kinds of things. So, uh, and then there's also um, quite a bit of information out there that says that your little button mushrooms have those same things, but not, it's like they haven't grown it enough because uh, they have smaller amounts. So they are still good for you and they still contain those things, but they're just um, babies. So they're, so the medicine is not as strong as the portobello's. Okay, so that's for the portobello's. And then uh, what we're gonna also add, when I cut this up, we're gonna add some shiitake mushrooms, which are which bump up even higher on the um, medicinal scale. So your, your shiitakes are actually um, really good for the immune system. These are dried shiitakes. Um, yeah, I went shopping and I didn't see any fresh ones. Usually they have fresh ones uh, in most grocery stores where the mushrooms are. They have the fresh shiitakes and they didn't happen to have them. So I'm going to use dried ones. <clears throat> but with the shiitakes, they, are, they have a bit of a um, rubbery texture, you know, chewy texture. So when I use the dried ones, um, they're even chewier, like when they're fresh, they're not as chewy. Um, but the stems are like really chewy and <clears throat> uh, kind of tough, really. So what I do with the stems is I put them into like um, soups and that kind of thing, uh, or teas or things like that, so that, um, you know, because it, it, they're just a little bit too tough in, in my mind, the stems of the shiitakes are too tough. Anyway, shiitakes are also anti-aging, they're antiviral. So anytime you can get some antiviral um, food or medicine into you to protect yourself from viruses, it's a really good idea. <laughs> you, know, you have to work with your immune system. And so I'm also drinking the, um, <laughs> the butterfly tea. So this has the butterfly pea plant in it, and this is one of the ingredients in my chakra tea. So um, it makes it turn a beautiful blue. Maybe I'll set that over here so you can watch the color get deeper and deeper into, um, yeah, into the deeper blues. Okay, so we're going to add the rest of this, get this going. And this is just going to be a little um, barley side dish, like instead of rice. And the barley, I which I didn't... Um, I hadn't really investigated barley too much, but it's like one of the oldest grains. And when I was reading up on it, it was like, like from Egyptian times and from, uh, you know, I don't know, like almost, almost BC, you know, <laughs> in the early, early ages of, of when the, when the world was only like a couple hundred years old, they had barley plants. And so, um, it was one of the oldest and most, um, valued crops because it grew pretty much anywhere and was really nutritious and full of uh, vitamins and B vitamins and all that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's got protein in it and it has fiber. So it's a really good alternative, um, to rice as well. You know, um, even though your, your wild rice and your whole grain rice is really good, the barley is that much better. And in this case, I'm going to add a little bit more water to that. Um, in this case, we are using, it's called a purple barley. And this one here is from Wayne Smith at Vancouver Island Grain and Milling. Mill and Graining? It must be grain and mil milling. <laughs> so it's a purple barley. And the purple barley is even more, it's almost like an heirloom variety of um, uh, more ancient than the... Um, regular pearl barley and and also it's really important if you're gonna if you're going to do barley or any grains you know it's best to do the whole grain so you don't really want it um, the outside edge um, outside shell of the of the whatever it is you know, whether it's a rice or it's a barley or whatever um, that has a lot of the nutrition is in the outside so you don't really want it um, pearled or shelled or or processed that's the word I'm looking for so anyway, this is super awesome, and um, so we're going to do a couple different things with the barley, and um, the purple barley also has way more antioxidants. 
Oh, good idea. Monique is, is sharing some information on the mushroom stems. Yeah, dry them and put them in your, in your, like I have our, it's a coffee grinder, but I use it for herbs only. And uh, yeah, you can put it in and drink this as mushroom tea. Very good idea. So, um, yeah, so anyway, back to the barley. So we're going to put some of this in. And I'm not going to put too much in yet because I want those guys to cook down. And you know what? I forgot to put the carrots in too. Sometimes I get so distracted having so much fun um, yakking away with you guys that I forget things. Okay, so these particular carrots, um, they're organic, but they've got a little bit of, um, they're, these are the ones that you can get uh, if you are local. They're at Savon, and, um, and these are the organic juicing carrots. So they're kind of irregular, you know, they're not like your perfectly perfect shaped carrots um, because they're for juicing, but it's a really good deal. It's like, I, I'm pretty sure it's 10 pounds and it's $10. So it's a really good deal if you're wanting to, to juice or you just want to get organic carrots and you don't really care how perfect they are, that it is a really good deal at Save On. And they usually, um, they usually have them all the time. So that's awesome for people to know that. So I'm going to put these guys in and yeah, not too many because I want to add some peppers too. So of course, you know that it's really good to put carrots in your smoothies. If you're making a smoothie, put as many vegetables as you can in the smoothie because it really increases the content. You know, um, I hate to always bore you guys with making too many smoothies because I make a lot of smoothies. Um, so I won't go into it too, too much, but just for the new people on here, when you make a smoothie, it is super, you know, it's a, it's a super opportunity to add more nutrition into your diet so that you can actually add more vegetables. So whenever you make a smoothie, um, I don't, I usually only add one piece of fruit. I try not to add very much fruit unless I'm making it as a dessert smoothie or just you know, a fun, yummy smoothie, but if I'm making it for health reasons, then you really do need to add as many vegetables as possible, like carrots and celery and, um, you know, all of your dark leafy greens, like chard and kale and all that stuff. Most people know to add kale. It's pretty much everything. So, um, yeah, so for sure, make sure that you add lots of vegetables to your smoothie, because anytime you can um, make something healthier, you really should, because why not, right? You're not even going to notice it, especially with the carrots. They're great in a smoothie. And the celery is so beneficial, too, because it, um, celery is so good for arthritis. It's just super awesome. I did wash all these, and I don't know why I didn't get that label off. I'll have to cut that off. Um, but yeah, when you're bringing all your vegetables home, it's really, really it saves a lot of time and it gets you to eat a lot more if they're washed when you put them in the fridge. They're just looking at, um, yeah, the mushroom powder. That is a really good idea. I do, I actually buy a mushroom powder and I add it to our chai tea and I add it to the smoothies and I have it every morning with my, um, with my morning powders. So yeah, and the mushroom powder, if you're looking at a mushroom powder or you're wanting to um, create a mushroom powder, um, I'm gonna add some of these green peppers. I don't think I'll add them all. I'm not that much of a fan of green peppers. I just really want them for color. <laughs> oh my gosh, but the peppers are really, they're super healthy for you too. We'll add a red one here um, and, some, and some spicy ones, but the peppers have um, vitamin C and vitamin A and so they are really good for you and the beautiful thing right now is that it's pepper season and these are organic because it's really really hard to get um, organic peppers in the winter usually you know usually they're pretty GMO or GM now they say GM now instead of GMO um, I'm not sure why but I'm, I'm I'm so old, I go back to the old languaging. But anyways, um, so if you can get the organic peppers now, like at your farmer's market, get them. And what I did was I got a big bag and um, 
and then dehydrate them. And that way you have your, your like, when you rehydrate them in water or whatever, then you have your organic peppers to use over the winter, which is super awesome, um, rather than buying the ones that aren't organic. And, um, yeah, so they're full of antioxidants, too. And um, I'm trying to think of what, um, oh, potassium. They have potassium in them as well. So they are really, really good for you. And, of course, if you're going to go into the hot peppers, they're even better for you because the hotter they are, they are the healthier it is for your heart, healthy for your circulation. See, I have some of these little, um, these little guys are pretty warm. Actually, this one's really warm. I'm not sure what kind it is. I'm going to add a little bit of that. I don't want to add too much because, um, <clears throat> because I know how warm it is. <laughs> and you always want to be careful too when you're working with a super hot pepper you might even want to wear gloves because if you touch this to any part of your mucous membranes, your eyes, nose, throat, anything like that, um, you're going to feel it. So remind me not to stick my fingers in my eyes when I finish working with this. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going to chop it up super tiny because it will it will have a bite even when it's cooked. I don't know what kind it is, but it's a cute little thing. Okay, super tiny. Okay, and um, yeah, no, no touching. You're not supposed to touch your face anyway, so these days, so no, no sticking my fingers in my eyes. Okay, <laughs> so now what we're going to do here, <clears throat> we have, um, I'm going to cook this down. So um, I do kind of want the peppers cooked a bit. For a lot of people that may have um, sensitivities, uh, you know, it helps to, if they, it's more digestible if they're broken down a bit. So, yeah, not too many people, um, <laughs> I'll wipe my fingers off now, I'm scaring myself. <laughs> not too many people um, digest raw peppers, especially the green ones, because, I mean, honestly, you know, it's kind of, they aren't really ripe. So it's best to cook that down, so I'm going to do that. So in the meantime, I'm going to show you another recipe here. <clears throat> Super easy. Earlier this week, we did, um, we were doing a breakfast. Uh, I had requests for breakfast, healthy breakfasts. And so we did um, overnight oats, which was really fun and good. And we uh, worked with the, the oats. If they're soaked, like whole grain oats, if they're soaked, um, yeah. <laughs> then um, it's, they're easier to digest and it has a better, um, better quality of all the different nutrition and, and uh, all vitamins and minerals in the soaked oats rather than um, cooking them. And sometimes when you cook them, if people are sensitive, then it can create digestive issues too, like be a little bit harder to digest. So anyways, this barley here, it's also a really good alternative. And especially if you've got an heirloom barley like this, um, that and, and purple especially with all the antioxidants and everything um although you couldn't i don't think you could soak these and leave them overnight and eat them uh, because that would just be really hard to digest in this particular case i think they need to be cooked and the other thing is um with these kinds of grains they have lectins and so um I did a whole video on lectins, and so the lectins are the, um, they're, um, now I can't remember if it's a protein, but it's an indigestible um, thing that grains have, beans have, you know, you know that you have to soak and rinse your beans and soak and rinse your beans, and the more that you do that, the more you remove the lectins, and that's the whole reason, because the lectins um, produce the gas and the bloating and the uncomfortable in indigestion. So, um, so soak and rinse and soak and rinse, and then, and then the, you, depending on the grain, you should do that as well. Soak and rinse them before you cook them. And the other thing that helps to reduce the lectins is to um, fast cook them or pressure cook them in a pressure cooker, you know, like, or in an instant pot or something like that. Um, because the, the soaking and rinsing removes the lectins, and then the faster you cook them, it removes the lectins. So that is pretty much why you would not want to do this as an overnight oat. 
style thing. You want to make sure it's rinsed and then after they're cooked, if you want to rinse them again, then that helps even more to prevent that gas and bloating. So these guys were cooked in my Instant Pot. Um, what did we do? We made something with them the other day. Now I can't even remember what. I, I'm pretty sure it was soup. <laughs> Anyways, and that's the other thing that, that I share with everybody is whenever you're cooking, make a little bit extra of everything that you cook and then you have it in the fridge and you can just pull it out and add it to another recipe. It just makes makes it a lot easier, you know, when you're trying to think of what to make and then you just go, oh, I've got a little bit of barley, barley left over, I've got uh, maybe some potatoes left over, some rice or some, you know, carrots or whatever. It makes it easy to um, add to a meal or a stir fry or a soup or whatever. So I am letting this cook down a little bit. There's no oil in here at all. This um, pot started off with just some water and um, and so uh, just letting these carrots soften up and trying to get these green peppers especially cooked a little bit more so I'm just gonna leave that for a second and then um, go back to this recipe okay I made a really long I made a really short story very very long okay we're back to the breakfast so you can use your um, your leftover um, barley and eat it like oatmeal so you can just eat it like this you can it's easy to have cold if you want um, you can heat it up a little bit if you want to put it in a pot with a little bit of water you can heat it up and then you would add your um, your other ingredients like you can add pumpkin seeds uh, you know for adding extra protein if you wanted to okay I need to add a little bit of water to this I just want to kind of get it touching the bottom of the pan to get just a wee bit of browning. I know browning's not really good, but sometimes, sometimes we cook for flavor, which, <laughs> which will be the next recipe after this. Okay, so we're going to let that cook down. Okay, back to the barley breakfast. So you can add this, you can add a little bit of almond milk to it, um, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, uh, you can add coconut, um, I'm just looking at what I have here for ingredients. Uh, you can add coconut flakes. You can add cranberries. That would be really good. Dried cranberries. Um, and then it makes a really nice healthy breakfast. Like It's because it has um, more protein than the, than the oatmeal, um, it will last longer. And... Oh, there was another fact about the uh, barley. Oh, I remember, I remember. <laughs> sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. The barley um, actually lasts longer than many, many other foods. In, in, um, it's in Dr. Greger's book, The uh, How Not to Die, and he runs the nutritionfacts.org. And... Um, is there a resistant starch in barley? I honestly don't know. I do know there are lectins and it needs to be rinsed and cooked. Um, but anyways, the, um, yeah, it's a good question. We can all look that up. That's the nice thing about being on the Facebook Live is that when we all come together and we share information, it's awesome. So that's something I'll have to look up, Monique. That's a really good uh, question. Anyway, back to Dr. Greger's. Um, <laughs> his in nutritionfacts.org. So he does a lot of research. Um, scientific research on foods and what they do and he's written a lot of books and he the nutrition fact, org is a free website um, all the money from his books goes gets completely 100% donated to charities um, and research and um, and so anyway he said that the barley will make you feel full and satisfied for a longer period than most other foods. So they do use barley in a weight loss program uh, and they find it very, very effective for stabilizing your blood sugar and having you feel like you're, you know, you don't need to eat anything else for minimum of four hours. I remember that. Um, so anyway, so that's another good reason to have this for breakfast. So we've added um, cranberries. Uh, I might as well go ahead and add the uh, sunflower seeds. So you want your, your nuts and seeds to be very, um, for them to be raw. 
because there's way more nutrition and easier to digest. So if you're buying nuts, like mixed nuts, and um, these are the raw pumpkin seeds full of zinc. Zinc, we all need zinc these days. And um, yeah, so if you're buying a nut mix, you wanna make sure that, it's, that the nuts are not um, you know, roasted. Like I say, you know, nobody's gonna be perfectly perfect all the time, but if you're after optimum health, then you can take the opportunity to choose a healthier alternative, which would be a raw nut mix uh, rather than a roasted nut mix. And then, you know, keep in mind that when you do do the, um, when you do do the roasted mix, it is harder to digest. And so the other thing that, um, that's good to know, you know, when I'm working with clients and they're having uh, pain and inflammation issues and digestive issues and that kind of thing, like if, if it occurs or when it occurs, whatever it is, you know, sore, um, achy, achy joints, um, sore shoulders or backs or whatever, if, if you haven't done something physical to induce that, like if you just are really, really sore, think about what you ate um, four to 12 hours before. Because a lot of foods, um, especially a lot of fried foods, are very inflammatory. So when they do oil, uh, when you fry oil, like whatever, it could be anything from potato chips to um, french fries to uh, fish and chips, anything fried. When you fry an oil, it changes the molecular structure. And, it, and changing that molecular structure becomes... Um, it's very inflammatory and it, it turns the oil into, uh, it, it makes your body inflamed. The more times that you cook the oil, the more inflammatory it becomes. So the, the structure, the chemical structure changes again and again and again. So if you go somewhere and you eat something where they've reused the oil and they've heated it over and over and over again, that creates um, you know, a way, way higher percentage of you having an inflammatory response and feeling really sore and achy either four to 12 hours later. So, and everyone's different, so it all depends. There may be certain potato chips that you can eat that don't create that inflammatory response that you're fine the next day. There could be certain brands, uh, and it depends on the kind of oil too, of course. Um, there can be certain brands that will create that response. So if you feel, um, you know, not good, there's just so many ways to describe that. If you don't feel good, look at what you ate four to 12 hours before and get to know the things that set you off that create the in inflammation response or the in inflammatory response and the uh, pain. So, and that can go down to, I mean, oils and fats are a really huge, huge um, common thing that create it. And then certain people will be sensitive to lectins, um, to nightshades and all that kind of thing. That's, that goes into more of a um, digestive issue. I'm gonna add some pecans to this too for extra protein. So, um, yeah, so this is, um, I'll, I'll leave it there for you to see. But this is a really good, you can add a little bit of almond milk to this, a little bit of maple syrup. Um, I do have cranberries in there, but if you want to add something else, you know, some other kind of sweetener you could, and then you just have your, um, super healthy barley breakfast. So that is a really nice, um, I thought I had some coconut here, but I guess I misplaced it. Uh, oh, the other thing you could add is a little bit of ginger to this. Oh, that'd be really good. I have some, um, this is a brand new package. Some little, this is a naturally, um, it's, it's uh, ginger pieces and it's been, well, no, I don't know if it's really been processed, but I guess it has because it's like a candy ginger, but it's, it has um, raw organic sugar cane on them. This is a really good company that I get these from and they're kind of big chunks. So I'm just going to take a few out and chop them up and add it to the oatmeal. So things like that. You can add ginger, you can add all kinds of things. So that is really cooking down nicely and and you know if you've heard me oh i just cut the onion with that i can't use that here i don't want onion flavor in my um in my oatmeal so do we have another knife here 
we don't have another knife here. Oh, yes, we do. Okay, so, um, yeah, so the ginger is really good for circulation. Um, you know, it is very anti-inflammatory. It's also antiviral, uh, antifungal is, ginger is one of the best things for you um, in whatever form that you can get it in. Okay, so this is going to be really, really yummy with the candied ginger and with the barley. Okay, so that's super awesome. That's going to be really, really yummy. Okay, so that's your super healthy breakfast with barley rather than oats. So we will make it look pretty and set that aside. Okay. Um... Okay, so I have, actually I'm going to move this because I probably don't need it right this second. And um, we'll set that right there. So I have overcooked this, okay? Most of the time, you guys know, I like to uh, kind of do my carrots and my onions and get them well cooked, you know, so that they're chewable. Um, and then I like to add the other ingredients and have them just slightly, slightly cooked or steamed so that they're raw, so that you have more nutritional value. But in this case, I really did want to cook this down to make these peppers more digestible. So you can see that that's looking pretty nice. And it also does, you know, as much as, um, you know, as much as I try not to brown things, it does really bring out the flavor. Okay, so that's that. I am going to add more barley to this. And so this is going to be kind of like um, a side dish instead of rice. Okay, and I'll save some to add to soup. So because I probably, I think it's been like three days, this should be used pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to save that for making a soup maybe tomorrow. Okay, so this is looking super yummy. Um, oh, there goes that smoke alarm again. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, granulated garlic. There's no garlic salt in this. It's just granulated garlic. And we're going to add some pepper, of course. And we're going to add some cayenne pepper, which is, 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 is usually right around here somewhere. I might have moved it to the stove. Oh, here it is right in front of me. Okay. Cayenne, okay, and I can hear that sizzling. You can probably hear it sizzling too. Okay, we need to stop the sizzle. And so what we're going to do, oh my goodness, it's really needing that battery changed. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to add our greens now because we want the greens lightly cooked, um, just steamed. And oh, it's got a leaf on it. So, oh my gosh, my kale, my beautiful kale and chard. And honestly... Um, you know, the bugs are starting to, you know, they're eating it, which is so sad. I washed it off, but, um, I don't know if it's those little moth things, but, um, you know, the kale, the kale and the chart are usually really resistant. And so I don't know if it's those moths or what it is, but something is eating everything. And of course, you know, it's the end of the season too. So I'm just going to roll these leaves up. And these are, of course, your deep greens that you always want to incorporate into your diet as much as you can your kale chards spinach um collards whatever it is it's green you could i grew some pak choy you know any dark leafy greens super super beneficial and um full of vitamin k and vitamin c and you want to you do want to steam them a bit uh, just to break down the cell walls because they are, um, you know, they're any, any kind of, you'll absorb more of the nutrition if it's steamed down or massaged. Everybody knows that. You guys have been watching this for a long time. So, yeah, so I'm going to add some of that. Um, the chard. I'm just looking for the chard. Okay. The chard's going to break down easier, so you don't need it as... My poor little charts are getting a little, they're getting, starting to get a little tattered. Um, the charts you don't need to steam as much, so I'm going to add those after. So just add these guys here. 
that adds the beautiful green color. And then we'll um, just fold the charts and add those as well. Charts a lot easier. It's got a softer texture. If you guys, I'm sure that everybody has eaten chard, but it has a much softer texture, more like lettuce. And so, um, so I usually use it in place of lettuce. You know, once in a while I'll buy romaine, but most of the time I will go with um, chards or um, as, as my base, my lettuce base, I'll use chards or pak choy or any of those leafy greens, and as well as the kale and the collards um, for the base. It's not too often, like I never ever buy iceberg lettuce. Once in a while I'll buy romaine because, you know, everybody loves Caesar salad. But, okay, so that is looking really good. Um, I am going to, I don't know why, I always forget the garlic. So, and I'm not going to run around and go get it, but I will add it after, like real garlic, fresh garlic. But I'm going to add a little bit of tomato sauce to this too. And get a fresh spoon here. So, oh, I guess I don't need to spoon it out. I can just kind of wing it. Okay, here we go. There we go. Not too much. Okay. And the other thing that's always really good, I find, um, to add to your tomato sauce is a little bit of, um, if you add a little bit of maple syrup to it, it really helps, you know, to balance the acid, like for flavor. At least I think so. That's just my thought on that. Okay, so... That is looking really good. I think we need, since I didn't add too much garlic, I think we need to add quite a bit more until I find my, my actual real garlic. And uh, is that it? Okay. I'm looking for the maple syrup. Maple syrup, where did you go? Where did you go? And the other thing you can add too, we have some of the um, Bragg's liquid uh, liquid aminos, which is like the naturally fermented soy sauce, so it's better for you than most soy sauce brands. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's it, other than the, um, you know, what I would do or what I will do after, because I forgot and I don't want to run around the kitchen while you guys are sitting here watching me, watching an empty spa here, um, is add the garlic and just like just a teaspoon of maple syrup just to, to switch that. Uh, tomato flavor. Do I sell propolis? No, I don't sell propolis. Um, and I don't know of any local suppliers, but I would definitely get a hold of the health food store, um, Healthy Habits, and uh, and they would have it, I'm, I'm pretty sure, for sure. Yeah, no, that's, I don't, um, I sell a lot of teas. I have all my teas. Um, the three teas that I have that I sell a lot of are the cold and flu tea works amazing. Like, you know, I have to say I have hundreds of testimonials on the cold and flu tea. It works like it really works. And, um, and my vitality tea is really good for the immune system, has all kinds of immune enhancing herbs like astragalus, ginseng, um, ashwagandha, uh, lemon balm, lemongrass, all kinds of really good, healthy, uh, immune enhancing herbs. And then my chakra tea is really fun because it has all kinds of other immune enhancing herbs and herbs for health, as well as the blue butter butterfly pea plant that turns it blue. Actually, it turns different colors. The chakra tea turns the colors of the chakras because of all the other ingredients that are in it. So I sell those. I do make herbal blends for, um, uh, health challenges such as, you know, specific things that, um, that you would tend to have reoccurring like migraines or headaches or, um, other things that, um, other health issues that people, um, you know, that you've been to the doctor for and, and it, it's, you know, it's just not fixing itself. So I do <clears throat> herbal blends for that. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Okay. And, um, Salves, lots of salves and things like that. So for um, arthritis, aches and pains, and all kinds of things like that, skin conditions, that's a big one. Uh, it seems like the stress lately, the stress that people have been under, um, especially lately, there's a lot of uh, skin issues, eczema, 
I mean, no kidding, headaches, um, heart palpitations, all kinds of things. So I am working on essences and blends for calming the nervous system. And I do them um, specifically for the person's needs, whatever, you know, whatever that might be. Uh, so it's not just a standard, you know, a shelf of blends. They're each individually made for the person. Okay, that's looking awesome. So we are good. We're awesome. So we worked with Barley today. Um, and I have to say, I'm so uh, grateful. I didn't bring any in to show you, but I was gifted more bay leaves. Bay, B-A-Y, leaves like fresh which are super awesome, antiviral, um, antioxidant. Um, they're good for so many things. Um, like they actually smell kind of like eucalyptus, so really good for coughs, colds, flus, are good in teas, are good in, in, in uh, tinctures and in salves. They're anti-inflammatory. And so um, thank you for that gift. I'm so happy to have been gifted um, more bay leaves, which is super awesome. And... Um, yeah, so that's, uh, if you know anybody with a bay plant, use it in tea. And if you do have bay leaves and you've had them in your cupboard for two or three years, you know, seriously go out and buy some fresh ones um, and, and keep them as a tea because really good for colds, flus, sore throats. Um, they're antiviral. They're amazing. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. I've gone over time and we'll see you guys tomorrow at 11. Have a really, really great day. <laughs> Okay, we'll see you tomorrow.